economic problems and a lack of human resources may force Russian leader Vladimir Putin to make important decisions about how to provide resources for Russia's war or change the way it is waged to preserve the stability of his regime, according to the Institute for the Study of War, ISW. The ISW reported that the cost of maintaining the war will increase as Russia continues to spend human resources and material resources at the line of contact. Russia's resources are limited, and Putin cannot ignore these costs indefinitely. The Russian economy will reach a point of burnout. This meltdown will take a huge toll on Russian society, which may force Putin to make important decisions about how to provide resources for Russia's war or change the way it is waged to preserve the stability of his regime. Russia's economy and war effort are under growing strain, presenting increasingly serious challenges for President Vladimir Putin in sustaining the war over the long term. In a report on the 27th of October, the Washington Post said that Russia's economy faces the risk of overheating, as excessive military spending has driven economic growth in a way that forces companies to raise salaries to remain competitive with high military pay. Russian central bank head Elvira Nabiulina warned in July 2024 that the country's labor force and its production capacities are almost exhausted. The Washington Post noted that private Russian companies are struggling to compete with military salaries, increasingly being forced to offer wages several times above typical industrial averages. The ISW recently noted that regional authorities have sharply increased one-off sign-on bonuses for contract soldiers to maintain the pace of force generation of around 30,000 troops monthly. This underscores that Russia's manpower pool is finite and the country grapples with rising costs, both financial and social, to replenish forces on the line of contact. Putin likely views another partial mobilization or a general mobilization as too politically costly for his regime. Consequently, he has turned to crypto mobilization strategies, which are putting more and more pressure on Russia's wartime economy. The recent arrival of North Korean troops in Russia, reportedly deployed to the combat zone in Kursk Oblast, further highlights the precariousness of Putin's entire system for generating military forces. Kremlin spokesperson Dmitry Peskov on Friday rejected a report on regular contact between Russian President Vladimir Putin and Elon Musk, the owner of Tesla, X and SpaceX, dismissing it as untrue and absolutely false information. He told reporters during his regular conference call that Putin spoke to Musk only once, before 2022, in what was a medium-length phone conversation. The conversation was more of an introductory nature and the two talked about visionary technologies, technological solutions for the future. That was actually the only contact. 
After that, Musk had no contacts with Putin, Peskov said and blamed the Wall Street Journal report on the election race in the US that has become extremely fierce. The election race has entered its home stretch, and of course the opponents stop at nothing. Remember that a week ago they were saying that Putin allegedly talks to Trump all day long. How he allegedly talks to Musk all the time. It's all untrue, Peskov said that there were also similar claims about Donald Trump and Putin having regular contact. It's all untrue, Peskov added. Peskov was also asked about resuming a grain deal proposed by Turkey, according to Putin. He answered that there is an unofficial draft document that's currently being reviewed. The Black Sea Grain Initiative, brokered by the UN and Turkey, allowed 32.9 million metric tons of food to be exported from Ukraine, more than half to developing countries, according to the Joint Coordination Center in Istanbul. In 2023, Russia suspended an agreement that allowed Ukraine to export the produce safely through the Black Sea. The Israeli Defense Forces IDF, have showcased fighter jets that were used to carry out strikes on Iran's missile facilities last night. The video and photos released by the IDF show F-15 and F-16 fighter jets heading out to launch the attack in Iran. The images also show Israeli Air Force Squadron's four female navigators who participated in the attack. The aircraft safely returned to Israel after successful completion of the operation, IDF stated. Israeli Defense Forces reported on Saturday that it carried out successful airstrikes on multiple military targets in Iran, specifically targeting missile manufacturing facilities. Dozens of aircraft, including fighter jets, refuelers, and spy planes, participated in Israel's strikes some 1,600 kilometers from the country, the Israeli military said. <laughs> 